Okay, a quick review of the fair value method of accounting for investments. Um, this is something you should be familiar with from your other financial accounting classes, but just in case, let's get everybody on the same page with this. If a firm buys shares of stock but cannot exercise significant influence over the firm they've invested in, so you know, if, if you buy 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 shares of some company's stock, they classify that investment either as a trading investment or as an available for sale investment. Trading investments are made with the intention of garnering short-term trading profits. Otherwise, they're classified as available for sale. Trading investments and available for sale investments are generally, generally reported at fair market value. If the investment appreciates, we're going to record an unrealized gain and increase the reported value of the investment. Rather than directly adjusting the investment account and thereby losing the original cost data, we're going to utilize a valuation account to adjust the reported value up or down. So on our balance sheet, we're going to have the investment at cost plus or minus a market adjustment or a market valuation account. So let's go ahead and go through a quick example. Let's assume that on April 5th, 2020, big company buys a thousand shares of little company for $10 per share plus a $20 commission and the following information also applies. At the end of 2020, the price has gone up to $12 per, per share. At the end of 2021, the price has fallen back a little bit to $11 per share. And then finally, in early 2022, we sell the investment for $13 per share, less a $20 commission. So first, to record the acquisition, we're going to go ahead and record the investment in little for $10,020. $10,000 for the stock itself plus $20 for the commission. The commission is not a separate expense. It is part of the cost of acquiring this asset. As sort of an interesting side note to what we'll be talking about later, um, in this scenario, or in this situation, the commission is added to, the, you know, that would be considered an indirect acquisition cost. That commission is added to the cost of our investment. As we saw earlier in the case of mergers, Indirect acquisition costs are expensed as incurred, so a slight inconsistency in how those indirect acquisition costs are accounted for. In any event, let's go ahead and move on. So here's our acquisition on April 5th. At the end of 2020, we have to do what's called our mark to market analysis. We look at the book value of our investment, $10,020. And again, the $10,000 $10,020 is the cost of our investment, including the commission. The cost was not $10 per share. The cost was, in fact, $10.02 per share because we have to throw in that commission in evaluating the cost per share. The fair value of our investment is $12,000, 1,000 shares with $12 each. And so we've got an unrealized gain of $1,980 we need to have a debit balance in this valuation or market adjustment account to increase our investment from $10,020 up to $12,000. Since we're increasing the reported value of that asset, that needs to be a debit balance. The existing balance in that valuation account is zero, which means that our adjusting entry is going to involve a $1,980 debit. So we go ahead and debit the market adjustment for $1,980. Again, that is going to be classified on the asset side of the balance sheet directly below the investment, adjusting the investment up or down to fair value. And on the credit side, we recognize an unrealized gain. Now, the only difference between the trading portfolio and the available for sale portfolio is where that unrealized gain or loss goes. For a trading investment, the unrealized gain or loss goes straight to the income statement along with our other gains and losses. If this is an available for sale investment, that unrealized gain or loss goes to other comprehensive income and thereby to accumulated other comprehensive income. So in both cases, that $1,980 gain is going to go to owner's equity eventually. Trading investment, it goes to our regular income and then goes through into retained earnings. Available for sale investment, it goes to other companies of income and then through to accumulated other companies of income in the owner's equity section of the balance sheet. Okay, moving on to the end of 2021. We have to do the same analysis. The book value of our investment, the cost, is still $10,020. 
the fair value is now $11,000, so we're still sitting on an unrealized gain. We're still ahead of the game here, but we're worse off than we were last year. Last year our investment was worth $12,000, now it's only worth $11,000. In any event, based on that information, the necessary valuation balance is $980. And again, that's a debit balance because we're increasing our investment from a cost of $10,020 up to a fair value of $11,000. The existing balance in that valuation account is $1,980 on the debit side. So to get from the existing balance to the desired balance, we're going to need to credit that account for $1,000. A uh, T account would, prob would probably be a big aid in, in sort of thinking about this. So you might want to do that on a, on a separate sheet of paper if you've got an idle moment. In any event, we're going to go ahead and credit the market adjustment to pull it down from 1980 down to 980 on the debit side. And we've now got an unrealized loss. Again, overall, we're still ahead of the game. We're still $980 ahead, but last year we were 1980 ahead. So we're worse off relative to last year, but we're still sitting on a gain. Finally, we're going to go ahead and sell our investment for $13 a share, less a $20 commission. We take in cash of $12,980. Just as the commission when we buy the investment is not a separate expense, it's simply added to the cost of our asset. Similarly, when we sell an investment, the commission is not a separate expense. We treat that as reduction of our net proceeds. So instead of viewing this as selling our investment for $13,000, we say our net sales price after the commission was $12,980. We remove the investment from our balance sheet and the investment has been sitting there at $10,020 the whole time. And now we have an actual realized gain on sale of $2,960. Now at first blush, you might say, okay, we're all done, let's move on. But of course we're not because on our balance sheet at this point, we've still got that market adjustment account. That valuation account is still sitting on the balance sheet and it's sort of a disembodied account. Now, there's no investment for it to be attached so at the end of the year, we'll go ahead and just as a formality, go through our analysis. We say the book value of our investment is zero. The fair value of our investment is zero. Therefore, the desired valuation balance is zero. We've currently got a $980 debit balance, and we need to get rid of that by crediting the market adjustment for 980. So we go ahead and credit the market adjustment for $980 and that's going to be treated as an unrealized loss. Now, if you think about it, you know, sort of look backwards and see the gains and losses we've recognized over the previous years. In the first year, 2020, we recognized a 1,980 unrealized gain. In the second year, we recognized a $1,000 unrealized loss. Now, in the third year, we're recognizing another 980 unrealized loss. So over the three years combined, the unrealized gains and losses netted out to zero. They canceled each other out, and they were replaced with the actual bona fide gain on sale of $2,960.